Good morning, and today's topic is about, I said last lesson, is on the efficient use of paper rule. And this is very relevant for those practicing lawyers and for our law students who will be drafting documents for, uh, to be submitted for court. So, again, our topic is the efficient use of paper rule. But before I continue, I just want to emphasize that this project is totally independent and separate from my professorial job with the University of Cebu School of Law. And this one is intended to help our law students, bar reviewees, and even our legal practitioners. And even I have clients telling me that they're watching the video and they learned something, even if they're not in law school. Okay, so our topic is about Administrative Matter 11-9-4-SC. This means that it was um, given or handed by the Supreme Court. So it's a rule that was uh, issued by the Supreme Court and it became effective back in uh, January 1, 2013 after its publication in two newspapers of general circulation. In another topic later, I will give you what are the elements that would consider a newspaper as a newspaper of general circulation because that is still our our prevailing rule and if there are amendments i will emphasize or i will tackle on that later and i fully remember during the effectivity of this efficient use of paper rule i was still working for i'm sorry for that if you hear that I was still working for a law firm of, uh, and I was able to uh, see or witness the transition from the absence of the, uh, the rule and then the applicability or the application of a rule. And it's very, very um, surprising or it's, I know the late, in a while I will tell you why the Supreme Court uh, issued this rule. And in fact, I can say, I commend the Supreme Court for the issuance of this rule because I remember when I was working, there's no uniformity as to the pleadings, the motions, and other papers, manifestations, and compliance like filed by, the, by opposing counsels or counsels. There's no uniformity. What's the font size? What's uh, the margins? And for a person who is so particular of these things like me, so it was like, oh, there's no system actually, or there's no standard. So I really like it that this efficient use of paper rule was uh, issued by the Supreme Court. And as an environmentalist, I also commend the Supreme Court for this because one of the reasons is found in the this administrative matter is the environment. In the first whereas clause, if you look at the full text of this rule, the Supreme Court said that it takes five or twenty trees to produce five hundred reams of paper. So that's way too much and also 100,000 liters of waters, uh, water uh, are used. So I think this is also considered as the transition from having no standards than having this efficient use of paper rule. Then now we have the electronic um, filing or service and also the video conference hearing. So I think the Supreme Court is not um, stagnant. It's an evolving, just like our laws, it's an evolving institution. Now, the second whereas clause of the rule is the need. The court, the Supreme Court emphasized there's a need to cut the judicial system's use of excessive quantities of costly paper. And I even remember uh, reading a pleading from another lawyer, which was, uh, it has like, I think it was 
pink or yellow paper. So now there's a standard and you will find out in a little while. Now to save our forest, especially the, the Philippines, we have rainforest here and we are in the Pacific. So we have um, a variety of um, trees here, but we always hear news about flooding, denuded forests landslides even and these are very very catastrophic so there's a need to avoid these things and in order also to mitigate the worsening effects of climate change that the world is experiencing and when i read this i remember the very hot temperature here in cebu after super typhoon odette devastated my city and trees were like there's no more since I'm living in an island, of course, I'm away from the mountain. So, but it would have been better had we, um, if we had the, the trees, not since trees now are being cut so that there will be real estate development. And I think it's a common or a public knowledge even. Now, this rule is applicable to all courts and all quasi-judicial bodies under the administrative supervision of the Supreme Court. So the Municipal Trial Court, the Regional Trial Court, the Court of Tax Appeals, Sandigan Bayan, the Supreme Court. So these, the rules should be observed. And the documents must have standards or fo uh, a format or a style. And it will be applied in all pleadings, motions, and similar papers. As I read similar papers, I can say that it would be compliances, manifestations, position papers, and memoranda. So you have to observe this. And it should be single space in between or in the sentences and in between paragraphs there should be a 1.5 spacing and the font size should be readable easily readable and i'm using calibri or arial or times new roman and i remember when i was working my former boss was using courier new and i always remember that it's like the text or the font of the typewriter and the font size must be 14 inches so oh no i'm sorry 14 and that i got confused with the paper size okay 14 so in the, you should observe this and the paper size should be 13 inches by 8.5 inches white bond paper now i remember that as i'm using or writing a pleading you should not get confused with the u.s legal and the officio because officio is 13 inch and by 8.5 inch uh, inches so you you have to be careful when you do the printing because you have to consider also the page numbering now i have here with me the long size bond paper if you look at my screen now this is the long size bond paper now this uh you you have this is our standard so don't forget and you have to remember also that there are, if you're a legal practitioner, especially in the immigration or in uh, if you submit papers with SEC or the Securities and Exchange Commission, they use A4. And there are jurisdictions which do not have um, long size bond paper. And I know I think it's Japan and also uh, they're not using the short size bond paper. Now, in the Philippines, in our courts, we're using the long size one paper. Or if you're using your um, tool in your computer, it's Officio. I'm using a MacBook, so I can, uh, Pages, rather. So it's Officio. Now, it should also be observed by the court in decisions, resolutions, orders, reports to the courts, and transcripts of stenographic notes. Sorry, there's an airplane, as you know. Our house is near the, or in the runway now. The reports to the courts. I remember that as an, a notary public also, we have to have, or we have to comply the reportorial requirements. So 
when we look at the we have to prepare a cover sheet that each folder that's what i do each folder will contain the contents a summary of the contents of the folder like this starts from document 1 to 500 or 1 to 200 this is book 12 series of 2022 so i also observe these format and style prescribed by the supreme court now you have to emphasize the margins and prints okay if you look at the long size one paper now i'm i'm showing in my screen the left side should have 1.5 inch margin and the top should have 1.2 and the right should have if you're looking at the paper now so this is your right so this is one inch one inch 1.2 and this is 1.5 what is the ratio of the Supreme Court for that? Based on my observation and what I learned during our MCLE, if you have this 1.5 space in your left margin, these paper will be part of the records of the case. And they do the stitching. So if the, if the record becomes so bulky or so thick already, it's so hard for you to open. And if your margin is here, then other prints of the paper will not be visible. I hope you get my point. So the, I think this is what the Supreme Court is, is um, emphasizing that so as to have an easy access or not having any difficulty when reading or accessing the, the record, then that should be it. What, what about this one? Why is it 1.2 inches on top? If you notice when you flip the paper, if you flip the paper, then mostly we flip not on the side, but on the top. So also when the record becomes voluminous, it's so hard for you to read. And when I do the notarization, I always advise to have this, um, to have the signature not on the left side but on the right side so that during stitching it will be uh, it will not be um, blocked or like it will uh, the 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 signature will still be um, visible when i check on the record and if you're a litigator when you go to court you can really really um relate to this now every page must be numbered here it could be there's no standard actually so long as the page is numbered i know there are lawyers doing the page numbers or placing the page numbers in front or in the middle others here but please it's better not to put here like if this is your right so not to put here or could be here on top or in the middle of the top portion so i think that's better now what about the page number is there a standard like page one only page two because in the format of your page numbering is it could be page one of two i would prefer that i would advise also that it should be page one of two you put the also the the number the last of the last page so that in case of um, missing uh, pages the supreme or the courts will know that there's a missing page number and also your staff or your associate will know that the there is a missing number now how many copies to be filed this is aside from the one you furnish to the one furnished to the opposing party or the other party one original and properly marked i have a stamp a digital stamp on in my office and i use it to stamp so that the courts will have um will have an indication or will know that this one is the original and even the annexes here are original especially during uh pre-trial or during the formal offer of exhibits it sh there should be four copies if you're submitting uh, a document for the supreme court and if 
the one handling it is the Anne Bank, then plus 10 copies. So because it's the court in its complete number of justices. Then two sets of annexes for this Supreme Court and Bank or if it's acting uh, in subdivisions. Now, for the Court of Appeals and Sandigan Bayan, one original, which is properly marked also, and two copies. And this also includes the annexes because if you refer or include a document in your pleading, then there should be a copy of that and properly marked and referred to. The Court of Tax Appeals, one original and properly marked and two copies also, plus two copies. And if it's the Anbank, one original and properly marked and eight other uh, additional copies. Now, in other courts, one original properly marked also and that includes also the annexes. Now, what's our next lesson? I hope you learned something or so much from today's lesson and I think it's very important because we're standardizing our pleadings or the formatting and style. Now, our next topic would be on war under public international law. Now, I always get um, anxious every time there's a war plane um, flying over our um, um, airspace here because it's like, um, because when... Ukraine was invaded by Russia. I was in Europe at that time and I had to fly back to the Philippines um, immediately or the soonest possible time. And I imagine I bought the ticket the day before then I got my swab so that I will be allowed to enter back the Philippines. So, okay, so much of that. So our next topic would be war under public international law and i'm very excited of this topic because given that i'm a polsai graduate so i remember my ir or international relations uh, lessons or subjects back in college which is what more than 10 years ago what are the rules that govern war and what are war crimes and how are war crimes prosecuted under our international law? Again, this is very close to my heart because I'm also teaching, aside from my policy background, I'm also teaching public international law. And I participate in the Jessup uh, Moot Court competition. And I hope even I could be go uh, I could go to Washington next week oh, next year not next week okay thank you so much again I won't stop thanking our Lex classroom followers and likers on Facebook and if there are people you think who need this and you need to learn the law then please share our pace uh, page and I updated this photo because I'm, I want to thank the 4,000, more than 4,000 subscribers of Lex Classroom. And we're improving things. And I hope I'm getting better soon so that I can give or um, post some contents, update our YouTube channel. Now, our website is still under construction. And I hope that I will be on the dot and overcoming my challenge now. Again, I want our topic is efficient use of paper rule and our next topic would be on war crimes and in relation to public international law. Again, thank you so much and I, I want to share this before uh, stopping the recording. There's one client of mine who said that even if she is a finance graduate, she said that, oh, I'm learning so much, attorney, even if I'm just listening. And I thank you, even if there's one person only who will tell me to continue, then I will. Thank you so much. Thank you. And for the bar takers next month, I am praying for you. Ask and it shall be given to you. Thank you, thank you, and have a happy weekend ahead. I'm excited for the weekend. Thank you, thank you again.